Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Suprajit Engineering Limited Q2 FY22 earnings conference call hosted by Anand Rati Shares and Stockbrokers. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vijay Sarthi. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good uh, morning all. On behalf of Anand Rati, I welcome you all to the Q2, uh, Q2 results of the project. On the management side, we have uh, Mr. Rajit Kumar Rai, the founder and chairman, Mr. Mohan, MD and CEO, Mr. Akhilesh Rai, the director and chief strategy officer, and Mr. Madapa Gowda, the CFO and company secretary. As always, we will have a brief about the results from the management and then uh, followed by Q&A. Over to you, Mr. Rai. Yeah. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, I appreciate uh, Anand Rati to have been organizing these calls every quarter for so many years. We appreciate your continued assistance to Suprajit in reaching out to the investors. I also welcome all the participants for this uh, quarter two and H1 results conference call. Uh, we, we, we have uh, this time uh, Akhilesh as an additional person from the management team, uh, largely because of the recent acquisition of uh, LDC from Kongsberg. Uh, we'll also be talking a little bit about the developments at SCC. This is, these two are a little apart from what we have been normally doing in terms of business update and operations and financial numbers. So with that uh, the brief, I will start with uh, Mohan to give an operational review of all the divisions, followed by uh, Akhilesh on the LDC, uh, as well as um, Medapa a little bit on the finances. And then I'll give you a final comments before we open the floor for questions from all of you. Mohan? Uh, thank you very much. Very good morning to everybody. As usual, what I'll do is I'll give you an update on various business divisions and entities. Uh, before we start, I'll just give you some overview. As you all know that the global demand for the passenger car vehicles continues and uh, to be muted and primarily because of the supply chain constraints in the market. Specifically in India, the entry level of the commuter segment of motorcycle is under pressure and that's indicating kind of poor rural demand. The uncertainty of IC shortages and also the commodity shortages has hit all the OEMs. Therefore, the predictability has become poor. Along with that, we have a strong headwinds due to commodity and cost increases. We have been able to pass on some of the, uh, to some of the customers, we have been able to pass on the cost increases, and we are working in some other areas on the same thing. Overall, if I look at it, we have an enhanced and focused work on new product development within Superjet Group. So uh, let me dwell much more into details and start with the domestic cable division. Like what I said, despite the kind of cost headwinds, we have been able to do what I would call it as a 3C. Contain the increase, compensate for the increase by productivity improvements, and collect what has been increased at the vendor from the customer. So contain, compensate, and collect has been the mantra with which we have been operating at the domestic cable division. Our Narsapura plant uh, expansion will get completed by this year, and we'll be ready for the new business that we have recently won uh, from a marquee customer. And specifically, this had to be housed there, and hence, we expanded there. We are consolidating the disparate uh, manufacturing facilities which we were using for our aftermarket cable business and overall aftermarket business as such. And what we are doing is we are going to bring in some sort of a, a centralized facility to manufacture, store, and service and cater to the aftermarket business. While mentioning this, I would like to caution that we are not adding capacity here. But the idea here is to, realize, uh, to release the real estate uh, for any kind of future deployment of the new products. Moving over to the Phoenix Lamps division, um, here again, like other areas, we are facing extreme cost pressure. 
particularly in gases area, uh, be it krypton, hydrogen, you know, the rest of the gases, nitrogen, the gas uh, prices have all shot up and through the sky. While we have been able to make certain price increases in the Indian aftermarket, where we still hold the pole position, therefore we are a market leader, it's taking time for us to get such a kind of incre increase, both at the OEM level and uh, other label manufacturing or OLM as we call it, and the exports. Our uh, new HS1 line will be commissioned by the end of this year and we are on track there. Moving over to overseas, uh, well, before moving over to overseas, there is a cusp as, uh, as always, our SAL plus ACU, the Cable Exports Division. Uh, here again we have done pretty well and we continue to clock new businesses and uh, here again we are facing the material cost increase coupled with freight and cost, uh, container cost issues. We are in discussions with our customers to bear this burden and this is an ongoing process. Moving over to uh, three final last slide, this continues to be a challenge and we are critically reviewing with our team uh, in Germany and Luxembourg as to how to make things better out there. Moving on to the SENA or Superjet Engineering Non-Automotive uh, which is part of uh, Westcon. Uh, volumes have picked up here again and um, we are approaching the customers to again look for compensation for the cost increases. Uh, just to give, give a color on what's happening at what we call as Superjet Technology Center or STC for short. We started this way back in 2015 with the dream of coming out with technologically innovative products. Uh, here the idea was to come out with enhancing the value propositions along with the cables and also look and explore beyond cables. So I am very uh, pleased and proud to announce that we have made some significant progress here and uh, we have taken about 15 patents and uh, we are now into the fields of digital speedometer throttle position sensor, rotary sensor, and combination braking systems mechanism, both um, in terms of uh, geometry compensated and uh, fixed ratio types. We have also launched the cedar gear boxes along with the, the electromechanical clutches, and this is fitted along with our rotary cables. So overall, we expect the business to pick, uh, be picking up here because these are all already started to get commercialized. And we feel that STC is going to contribute significantly towards the growth of future uh, of this company. Thank you. Yeah, I, I will ask Akhilesh to give a brief on LDC, the recently acquired, uh, planned acquire acquisition of um, the light cable division of uh, Kongsberg and the recent updates on that. Akhilesh? Yeah, thank you. Um, so let me just give a quick uh, brief on the transaction again. Um, the EV of the transaction was about 42 million USD on a debt-free and cash-free basis. <coughs> Considering the projected performance for this year for them at about 90 million USD turnover and uh, you know close to double-digit EBITDA, we think this is an excellent value for our shareholders. Uh, further, they're projecting 100 million revenue uh, with double digit EBITDA next year, and we believe they can hit this, especially if the global automotive, uh, you know, the, the scenario bounces back strongly post some relief uh, on the chip and supply chain crisis that they're currently undergoing. The timeline for closing will be Q4 for us. Uh, due to certain IT carve-outs that need to be done, uh, certain manufacturing operational moves that need to be done, and uh, of course the regulatory approvals that need to come through. But uh, I'm just going to spend more time today just explaining some of the transformative nature of this acquisition for Superjet. You know that uh, we've had a global dream of being uh, the number one cable maker, and I think this is a big step towards that. Uh, it's important to understand that cable development and support locally is very critical for many customers. 
Uh, many of our global customers have asked us to set up automotive plants in China and in Mexico, and this gives us that opportunity to now support them in these areas. Uh, this becomes especially important with more complex cables and systems that LDC are doing. This acquisition gives us that perfect low-cost manufacturing footprint uh, to support customers and ensure that uh, we can continue to give quality technology products uh, on time and to the highest quality standards. Further, this acquisition and the people that are coming uh, with it is very important. Uh, K is a global, uh, global business, a global uh, listed business in Oslo. And uh, they, they come with high technology capability, uh, good systems in place. And they, they have ex excellent engineering and sales that, that's right next to our global customers. So it will improve our relationship in all these areas. It, finally, this, uh, you know, the acquisition gives us access to global platforms. Uh, this is a very important step for us. So with LDC's plant in China and in Mexico, we become a prefer preferred supplier to a lot of these customers that have plants in those locations and would like a cable supplier that can supply locally and as well as export globally to them. Uh, the, the main engineering talent is out of NOVA in the US, uh, again close to our customers in Detroit, but they also have a great engineering uh, capability out of the UK uh, and Germany. Uh, last, I would like to just add, I mean, I think there were some questions in the last call regarding uh, the EV scenario and how this uh, transaction holds up in the EV environment. Uh, you will notice that one of the key, key customers is Tesla. It's very important to understand that this company supplies to the, you know, the door and seat cable uh, assemblies that go into cars. And regardless of whether it's an EV or an ICE, you will still need your doors, your windows, and your uh, seats to <laughs> operate in the same way as they're currently operating. So we see no effect to this business with the change uh, to EV. And uh, probably there's, there are even more uh, applications of, these, uh, of our mechanical cables in the EV as an alternate solution in case power, you know, uh, the, the car runs out of battery, for example. Uh, key things like door opening or, uh, uh, you know, fuel, fuel lid opening still needs to happen through a mechanical system, and that's always going to be a fallback. So with that, uh, I will hand this over to Medapa. Uh, Medapa? Thank you, Aglish. Good morning, everyone. We announced the, the Q2 financial results yesterday for the quarter and half year ended uh, September 2021. The results are not exactly comparable with the corresponding period of last previous year due to COVID lockdown scenarios. The consolidated revenue for the half year ended uh, September 2021 was 855 crores, as against uh, 621 crores for the corresponding previous year, recording a growth of 38%. The consolidated operation EBITDA for the half year ended uh, September 2021 was 129 crores, as against 69 crores for the corresponding period of previous year, recording a growth of 88%. The standalone revenue for the half year ended September 2021 was 564 crores, as against 399 crores for the corresponding uh, period of previous year, recording a growth of 41%. The standalone operational EBITDA for the half year ended September 2021 was 104 crores, as against 50 crores for the corresponding previous year, recording a growth of 107%. We are also happy to inform you that uh, the overall group debt level has been reduced to 316 crores as on uh, September uh, 2021 from uh, 327 crores as on uh, March 31st, March 2021. For any further queries, you can approach me directly even after the call also, as usual. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madhapa. Uh, just before I let the questions come, I, I just like to make uh, couple of uh, general comments and a directional uh, talk, uh, you know, what is happening with the LDC as uh, Akhilesh rightly said, I think over the next three to five years time, I believe that it's a transformational uh, transaction for the company uh, in a totally different league than what we've done in the past. 
I think our ability to have a footprint, both manufacturing, engineering, and business development in the three key continents, Asia, Europe, and North America, would truly make us a, a, a player in a completely different league, and probably the most preferred one if we play our cards right. So I think that's transformational in terms of our positioning in the cable business. I think what CSTC is doing, we have been doing it for the last few years, but with the new Philip of you know relocating into a new place with uh, much larger facilities, test houses, and uh, you know uh, small small manufacturing abilities for small batches, I think it gives us an, an another uh, new dimension that Suprajit on its own can develop products that would be future ready, that would uh, stand the test of time of changing technologies, and that our engineers can deliver products which could be commercialized to any customer. I think the work done in the last two, three years have now fructified into specific businesses. I'm really happy to see the young team are doing a very good job. Uh, the new businesses have been won. We are reorganizing internally to make way for these manufacturing facilities. I think they are going to be game changer for Suprajit. Uh, these two are going to be, I mean, the LDC as well as the SPC are going to be the game changers for Suprajit in the next five years. With that uh, little brief, I will now let the questions to come. Uh, Zaid, you can please go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Rai. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Srimant Dodoria, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, a few questions. Uh, firstly, on the uh, LDC acquisition. Uh, sorry to interrupt, sir, but your voice is slightly off. So if you can just maybe bring the phone a bit closer. Yeah. Is, is it better now? Yes. Much yeah, better. I can hear you better, yes. Okay, thanks. So the first question is on the LDC uh, uh, acquisition from Kongsberg. Now, given this acquisition is strategically uh, so important uh, for Suprajit as it takes you to the doorsteps of the global customers, as a vision uh, in the next three to five years, what sort of revenues should one anticipate uh, this division can contribute uh, to Suprajit? I think, uh, you know, as you know, historically, Suprajit has not been giving futuristic numbers. All I would like to say is that with this acquisition and once it's integrated into us, the kind of growth Suprajit will have with the LDC will be significantly superior to the industry growth. I think that's all I want to say. The reason being that we will be a one-stop shop where any customer developing and launching any product anywhere in the world Suprajit can support them. I think that is the strength that we are offering to the customers. So that makes us a you know, preferred vendor to these customers. So we don't talk about numbers. All I want to say is that the next year number, based on the current projections that has been given by LDC during our due diligence, is about 100 million, and uh, within a bit of about 10 million. Let me also tell you, Kongsberg, you know, because of the way they are structured, they have a much higher overheads, and we believe that we can optimize even better over the years. And the fact that we have got this transaction at 40 plus million dollars is, you know, it's like a four, four and a half times a bit. I think it's a great value for money. And in terms of numbers, all I can say is that we will completely and significantly outperform the industry growth through this acquisition. Right, so that's pleasing to hear. Uh, so, so given that you know there are cost overheads uh, uh, in this division, are there uh, quick like low-hanging foods uh, uh, like uh, which you could you know cut down and you know you could increase the margins in the LDC in in, in the near term in the next one two years? Uh, 
I think one year will be a year of cleaning up. You know, as it happens in all transactions, there will be cleaning up work to be done. So I, I don't think one should go by, let's say, what will be the result of next year. I think I'm looking at beyond a year. And mm -hmm. from that time onwards, please understand, again, we are not taking the overhead of songs first. So Prajit, uh, we have a fairly lean uh, operating and overhead structure. We are just mm -hmm. taking their operating units. We are not taking their overheads of, you know, their divisional overheads or corporate overheads into this. So mm -hmm. I think it will not come as a part of the baggage in the first place. Right, sir. Uh, so a few questions on the uh, the LAMPS division. And now, uh, in, in the European uh, subsidiaries, in one of the subsidiaries where we have taken uh, the impairment in this quarter, uh, Luxlight, uh, are we due to take uh, another impairment uh, for Trifria in, in, in the coming quarters? Okay, let me give a little larger perspective to all the you know investors who are on the call. The yeah. the the value the value that was uh, uh, was there in whether it's Luxlight or Trifoy is not that it was done by us. It came as a part of a transaction with those kind of goodwills or investment values sitting in their balance sheets. So it came as a part of the baggage. And when we looked at it, I think uh, over the period of time we realized that it was um, how do I say? Uh, historically was somewhat overstated, but it came as a part of the transaction. Now, mm -hmm. what has happened over the years is that for a few years we have tried that as a strategic intent, that having a front end, just the way we have for our cables and other divisions, having a great front end would help in getting more business. But what we have realized now and we are uh, regrouping ourselves is simple. This is an aftermarket business. This is not an OEM business. So the price becomes an issue and a low cost of, you know, delivering the whole value chain to the end user, whether it's a distributor or, a, or, or somebody picking up a, a, a halogen lamp from a supermarket. Value makes a lot of difference. So there is a certain overhead that is sitting there. So we needed to prune that. That's what we did in the first step by making Trifa a much leaner, uh, you know, there are 30 people and today they've got only three or four people and the warehouse has moved to Luxlight. Now what is also the additional strategy that we are reviewing very critically is that it is time that we do the, all these things directly from India. We are to, looking at very focused direct export strategy and also the OLM strategy where we are working with the global majors. As you know, we work with Osram and some of the other marquee names to make sure that we are able to do direct exports out of India. Then the, the imperative is what is the importance of these uh, these two units. So the whole, uh, I would say, strategy would change going forward. And in that process, we thought that we'll take a very conservative approach of valuing these entities. And hence, the Luxlight, we have completely taken the full write down of the investment value. It is not partial. It is a complete write down. And in Trifa, there is hardly any goodwill left. And they still have cash in their balance sheet. So the valuations are now fair. But I think in the next one year or so, with the, with the close uh, internal uh, you know, assessment as well as with the board's uh, uh, you know, appro approvals, we should be making some final restructuring of these operations. I think it's part of, you know, where, when you're a global organization, there is always some cleaning up that needs to be done. I think we are, uh, we are taking that route over the next one year. Sure, so that's helpful. So lastly, uh, on the non-auto uh, Sena division, cables division. Uh, so if if I look at you know the the quarterly uh, volatility in the margins uh, in this division, like 21% in quarter four of 21 and 16% in the first quarter, and now 11%. Uh, what factors I, drive this volatility, I, and how should we look at the annual margins? You know, which no, you I think uh, you should look not quarterly number. You know. Please understand, it's not only there, it's elsewhere also. There have been significant swings in margins, quarter to quarter, quarter on quarter, last year to this year. We have been going through something like what we call as Samudra Matanam. I think uh, there have been fluctuations in quarter on quarter numbers, quarter to quarter numbers, half year to half year numbers. All I would like to see is that you look incrementally on half year results. Don't look at a Q2 results or a Q1 results. I think that will give a much more averaged actual scene rather than trying to analyze a quarter result. The reason is simple. 
the kind of uh, variations in uh, material cost the kind of cost of shipments that you know it's a question of if you have booked uh, 10 containers in first quarter it would have been an x and if you booked the same 10 containers in the second quarter it would have been 3x so the variations have been dif dif different and also we are receiving certain you know specific customer related pricing uh, adjustments maybe prior, you know pertaining to prior periods coming in this quarter so suddenly this quarter's margin either looks up or if it is coming next year next quarter for this quarter this quarter number goes down so i think looking at the individual quarter is not the right way please look at the half yearly results i think uh, having said that i would like to say that our sena division will continue to do well the growth has been fantastic the margins are stable will continue to be able to do the similar margin that we have delivered last year on sena i think that's all i want to say great sir thank you so much i'll get back in the queue thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address queries from all participants please restrict your questions to two per participant time permitting you may return to the queue for your follow-up questions our next question is from the line of Abhishek Jain from Dalat Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, Congress for a strong set of numbers and thanks for taking my question. So, uh, despite low volume in the two wheelers, uh, margin has been sharp expansion in core cable business. Uh, so what is the key reason? Uh, yeah, as we have seen that uh, four wheeler business has seen sharp improvement despite semiconductor shortage. So can you throw some light on the new business acquisition in uh, export and domestic, especially in the four-wheeler side? Mohan, will you answer that question? Sure. I think there are two parts to this question. One is the two-wheeler portion, and the other one is the exports four-wheeler portion. So let me first talk about the exports four-wheeler portion. Yes, we have been uh, winning new businesses. And uh, incidentally, uh, quite a few of these businesses are into the electric cars, uh, done by traditional players, not necessarily the new guys who are coming in. Uh, so I don't need to put the names out there. But the good thing for us is that we have a stake of cables coming into all the passenger car vehicles, which are incidentally electric vehicles, which are coming into the future. So that, those are the businesses that we have been winning. I presume that I have answered that part of the question. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Now I move on to your second part of the question, that is on the two-wheeler. Despite the volume that uh, headwinds that we have had, how is it that we have got better results? Now, again, I allude to what our chairman was talking about. You know, it is unfair to look at it quarter to quarter. But overall, on an H1 basis, I would say that is pretty stable. What happens is, when there is a price increase that you give to your vendor, you will not be able to realize a price increase from your customer immediately. Because you will have to go to your customer, you now prove to your customer that this is a genuine case. And based on the merits, and again, they also will uh, look at what the other players are doing, whether they'll be able to buy it at a cheaper place from somewhere else, how much those people have asked for a price increase, and net of it, they will take a decision. Therefore, the whole process takes time. So in the, in the process, what happens is there are two things that will happen. One is there will be a lag. Therefore, it can get booked in another quarter. Second thing is we would probably also be doing it backdated. So in some cases, that backdated you know, comes in as a bonanza for us. Therefore, it would be unfair to look at it Q to Q, but I would say that uh, I am pretty much confident to say that we have been pretty much stable on our business in two wheelers. So most probably the margin will hit in the next quarter because this quarter you have gained the benefit of the uh, the past quarter's uh, 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 revenue. So this quarter, uh, the next quarter, as there is a higher inventory in the two-wheeler space, and plus that uh, uh, mix will also change. Uh, uh, margin, uh, margin the core cable business will uh, expect it to go down. Abhishek, I think uh, just to you know add on to your point. See again, this quarter-on-quarter -quarter number will have such fluctuations. But if you look at it, as Mohan said, there is both at the supplier side and a customer side issues when the timings are different. So that's what is seen. 
we have seen the previous quarters or previous period uh, price increases suddenly hitting in Q2 and it looks like the margins have gone up. It is not. All I can say is that to answer your question about how it will affect on the longer term, I think from an Indian customer point of view on the cable division part of it, I think we have been able to fairly protect our margins and we have been able to reasonably pass on the price enhancement to customers. Okay, give and take some here and there. <clears throat> so overall, to answer your question, we think that the DCD, that is the domestic cable division's margins, are, will remain fairly stable despite all this turmoil that we have seen. Okay, sir, thanks. And my next question is uh, related with the guidance for the margin in the SENA division on annual basis. As you have acquired the LDC business, which is a low margin business, so what is the outlook ahead for the US business margin? For the next it, one? You mean for, for, uh, for Westcon? Uh, for yeah, SENA? So, yeah, SENA. Because that's the, most of the business comes from the US. And no. uh, you have... Yeah, the business comes from uh, U.S., but made in India, right? Yeah, so uh, uh, to some extent, it comes from the uh, plant nine, right? Yes, 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 yes. See, ultimately, what are we providing? What are we providing to customer is an option, a menu of options where they want the want it to be made. Yes, if it is made purely in the U.S., there will be a little lower margin, obviously, due to the higher overheads. But as we see in Sena, some of the new businesses we are winning is being manufactured or most of it is being manufactured out of India. So that's why the margins have gone into double digit comfortably in Westcon, I mean in, in Sena over the last one year from the previous years. So that margin, that's what I was mentioning, in the double digit is expected to be stable going forward also. So, so you are going to, uh, as you have acquired the LDC business and that is going to merge with the US business. So, yes. uh, uh, Margin expected to go down in this. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, you are talking about, yes, I got your point. Yes, you are right. The new entities will be acquired within Suprajit US. So you are saying the total margin in the US, Suprajit US. Okay, let me put it this way. The first year, I, I think I made this statement earlier. The first year, the margins may have an issue simply because, we, we, as you know, we are very conservative in our bookkeeping and accounting. So we'll be completely making sure that everything is taken care of appropriately. But going forward, let me make it this way. The margins at double digit is what we expect these businesses to generate, number one. Number two, that you say that it's low margin compared to the India's, let us say, cable division. You are correct again. But please understand, at what price we are getting these assets? What is the return on investment? What is the ROC of the business? I think that's what we need to see. I think the ROC of getting a business of 100 million with 10 million EBITDA at 40 million US dollars, the return on capital would be the similar to what the uh, you know businesses are generating out of India or close to it. So, from an overall point of view, I think it would be an excellent fit, both from the financial point of view as well as the operational leverage that we'll get in our global in our global ambitions. So can we assume the 15% kind of the margins uh, from the U.S. business and in the Westcon Plus? No, we will not expect, but uh, if you ask it, the return on capital employed, it will be similar to what we generate out of India. Okay, well, thanks. That's all for Yeah. Thank you. Next question is on the line of Pratik Kothari from Unique PMS. Please go ahead. Oh. Hi, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, in this uh, press release, you have mentioned a CAPEX plan over the next 18 months of 125 crores. If you can highlight uh, some more details on the theme, please. Yeah, sure. Mohan, will you go ahead? Yeah, sure. Uh, primarily, it has got three major content. One is the uh, buildings, the facilities, okay, the civil works and the buildings. And the second portion is the plant and machinery. And uh, the rest I will club it as others, okay, for the sake of ease. Uh, predominantly, a big chunk of it is going towards putting up these two buildings. One is completion of the Nasapra project, and another is what we call the aftermarket, uh, you know, uh, consolidated aftermarket uh, uh, unit. 
So we call it as unit 8. So this would be one major. And uh, in terms of plant and machinery, primary investments are going into two areas. One is the new HS1 line that we have been talking about in Phoenix. The other one is we are investing into our electronics business, particularly like putting up the SMT line and its associated investments for manufacturing of instrument clusters. These are the two critical, I would say, major big ticket items that comes into plant and machinery. And in the others, the big ticket item is what is getting into uh, what we call it as green energy, the solar energy. So we are putting up solar panels on most of our units to generate power. Therefore, these are the three critical areas where we are investing. Just one clarification, this new line in Phoenix, this is over and above the 7 million expansion that you're doing? Sorry, come again on this question, I didn't get it. Uh, last year we announced that we were putting up a new... Yes, I, uh, I got the question, Mon. I think it is the same one getting completed. It was started, a part of it is getting spilled over to the next year. I think this year and next year. It is the same one, yes. Okay, fair enough, fine. And so my second question on the LDC part, one... Uh, uh, first, congratulations on an excellent acquisition. Uh, uh, one, at a business level, not from the point where we are acquiring, but at a business level, what would be the ROC that this business would be making? And uh, second, we did talk about certain operational benefits, etc. But once this plant is utilized, and I believe in the last call you mentioned it's partly 60%. Uh, you, are, you, are, I'm, you are breaking up. I can't listen to you properly. Uh, am I audible better? Can you speak a little louder, please? Uh, Pratik, yeah, if you have the phone on speaker, I would request you to please take the phone off speaker. Audible now? Hello? Yeah, is this better? Yeah, this is better. Yeah. Uh, so my question was on the LDC part. One, at a business level, what is the ROC that they make? And second, we did highlight that uh, currently there's quite some unutilized capacity there. Uh, and and maybe over a period of time, once this is utilized, uh, just like we did in Westcon, would that be a strategy where we would be uh, manufacturing more of those cables out of India and exporting them and catering to the clients there? Or is this where we want to set up manufacturing plants closer to the clients, be it in China or US or uh, in Europe? Uh, and our man we'll be expanding our manufacturing base out of India. I think uh, I, I would only give a generalized answer. It's ultimately, it is customer is the king. We have to listen to the customer as to what they want, not as to what we want. That is the only way we can win businesses. In terms of, uh, you know, whether it is return on capital or whatever it is, eventually we expect it to be, you know, if you are trying to say what will be the next year's ROC, I do not know because I don't know how we are going to go about, uh, you know, strategically, you know, integrating into Westcon as well as our India operations. But on a longer term, I think based on what we have seen, because this is not the first time we have seen this asset. This was on the table five years ago as well. We know it is a fairly good, clean asset. I think the return on investment would be investors, uh, you know, people who are investors will expect from uh, this kind of businesses as you would expect from Suprajit. I don't want to give a number, but I would say that it would be as interesting as it is from what we are doing currently on our return on capital. In terms of uh, strategy, what the customer wants is most important. So now what will happen is that customer will have more than uh, three plants to look at. I mean, customer can buy, if North American customer wants to buy from North American plant, there is a Mexico. We can offer from India, we can offer from China. So it's a customer's decision. There is an issue relating to supply chain. Why customers now are preferring closer to them is you know what is happening in the global shipping, global container problems. So people are today preferring to be closer home, the manufacturing plants of the supplier. So that gives us the greatest asset uh, in, in this uh, particular transaction. That will answer that question also. You know, we can offer for Mexican plants, which is most of the manufacturing happening in Mexico for North America. We are in Mexico for them. We don't have to worry about China and, or India and when the container will reach. One of the biggest challenges we had in the last one year is to make sure our customer lines don't stop because this ship is stuck somewhere in some port, not able to unload the container. So I think it all depends upon how customer wants. 
but we have the footprint that's about it fair enough and so this last on the last slide part uh, i believe the operational rationalization uh, we have already done in the past right it's just a write off on the investments that you have done in this quarter so there are no further benefits on the operation side that we expect no operational side we still expect them to deliver better value in terms of more business for the group now whether it is delivered out of uh, europe or whether it is de delivered out of our noida plant is something different so that's what we are trying to deliver directly out of noida now not so much from uh, you know stocking and selling in the europe so the question comes whether we need such a big warehouse already we do have one now is it is it required at that size what is the number of people that we need to have it to do the change scenario this is what we will study going forward so we just wanted to make sure that we take a conservative accounting practice so that there is no further issues on these matters sir no friends my uh, last question in this press release again we have highlighted quite a bit about uh, chip shortages and obviously everyone else is also talking about it so uh, was this the bottom and are we seeing improved going forward in terms of orders that we received from the oems or uh, this would still persist as i said in our, i think we have also said in our uh, press release we don't see a change of scenario till end of march at least i mean there could be hopefully there could be some improvement but uh, it's continue to be up and down in terms of the availability and hopefully for the next full financial year i think the scenario will change and hopefully it would be much better than this year so this year we will continue we continue to have an issue today uh, whether it is in india or in uh, western world this quarter also having challenges and from what we understand from customer is that q4 that is the first quarter of next calendar year is also an issue okay fair enough sure so congratulations again and all the best thank you thank you next question is from the line of chirag shah from edelweiss please go ahead hey thanks for the opportunity sir two questions question was the housekeeping one uh, is it possible to quantify the the price hike that we have received in the quarter i can't hear you chirag sorry what was that hello yeah just a sec i'll switch my mic hello am i audible now yes yeah uh, sir first is the question uh, what is the extent of price hike that we extreme for the earlier quarter and what no, i, I can't you are very you are garbled chirag hello uh chirag your voice is not that clear when you're speaking hello yes is it better now sir yes it is better yes sir my question is what is the extent of uh, price hikes or uh, you have received in the quarter which pertains to earlier quarters and whether it is for a quarter or it is a more back dated in nature it is it for two three quarter that we have received yes i think uh, your the question is about uh, you know the impact of the uh, price increase on this quarter yes in this yeah. quarter we have also received for the previous quarter as well as for the previous year for example if you are that's what is the question is it possible to quantify yes. is it possible to quantify i think uh, yes it is possible i think you can probably have a uh, you know conversation with meta pa offline chirag i think it should be yeah. possible secondly uh, if i look at the stand alone business uh, okay we are closer to 20% margins now for on a consistent basis so la out of three out of last five quarters we have been achieving closer to 20% margins now this is way you above our which 20% where you are talking about the I'm stand alone business huh stand alone stand alone stand alone okay okay yeah so we had done 18 plus then 19 plus and now 20% so out of five three out of last five quarters we have been almost reaching uh, 20% margin the last two quarters sir let me again clarify this has got mm -hmm. significant price increase in fact of previous year also oh. so please don't go by that okay the uh, second side is strategic also, one and and also to add on to this i think uh, in this quarter we we have also looked at critically some of the earlier provisioning and uh you know things that we had both at the supplier and customer ends and some of them which when we felt that was not required anymore and, uh, you know we had reversed that so there is also an impact of that positive impact of that in the stand alone as well okay so that is beyond the price increase let me make it clear yeah 
Thank you. Thank you for this clarification. Sir, it's slightly strategic one. Uh, it's with respect to LDC acquisition. So yes. if you look at our past four acquisitions, you know, uh, see the, the Phoenix lamp, we had some challenges over there in terms of restructuring, which got and uh, which is still in process. Okay, it now uh, it is consuming management bandwidth over there. And secondly, when we look at the Westcon acquisition, we had a strategy that we can use it to expand our customer base and also cross sell to other geographies. Some of these things haven't played out as we as we had hoped for. Uh, uh, so how and when we look at LDC, we have some similar aspirations. So uh, have you taken into consideration some of the learnings that we had from the earlier two acquisitions? They are not even questioning the price of acquisition because even both Westcon and, and Phoenix were extremely cheap acquisitions despite the delay in the strategy. It was not a drag on overall return on capital. So I'm not even questioning that. But my more thought process is on how we are looking at it and in terms of management bandwidth that is consumed post the acquisition. Good point, I think, Charag. I mean, all I would like to say is that, you know, when we are trying to grow the business, you know, what are what a company who has got global ambitions, you know, we are we looking at the 3 million cars in India or the 80 million cars in the world? So obviously the answer is well known. So in that quest to acquire those markets and acquire those market shares, acquire those businesses, we take certain strategic decisions. You know very well when we are doing a due diligence, you only see the bride dressed up well, right? So without any pun, I mean, it, it's no, uh, with no, no offense. But it is all, uh, you know, sort of uh, presented in a certain way. And when we really do it, there is always some change to the practical situation there. Having said that, we also know these customers and these businesses have been in place for many, many years. That means they have been delivering value to whoever the owner were, owners were in the past. So certain things work exactly the way we look at it. Certain things don't. Now, in terms of the acquisition of uh, Phoenix Lamps division at 40 to 50 crore uh, EBITDA for the last six, seven years, our investment of 125 lakhs have been, 125 crores have been returned in more than one fold. So was there a challenge? Yes. Lux Light was a challenge? Yes. We have taken a call on that. But has there been a great cash generation? Yes, there has been a great cash generation. Similarly, Westcon, first two, three years I have told in many times earlier, we, we went with the existing strategy and then we had to change the strategy, we had to change the person or the people. So we did that too. And then today we are seeing the change of things, how the business is growing in the last, uh, you know, Europe, US market is growing at 3%, we are growing at 20%. That means we are getting somebody else's business. So the strategy, the timing may be different, but strategy has worked well for us. Now with the LDC, is becoming a lot more transformational for us. Will there be something that is not gone exactly the way we want? It may very well be, but on an overall sense, if our intent is 80% met, I think we should be more than happy. For the value that we are getting, at what price we are getting, I think we are already very much there uh, as the best possible deal for us. But, you know, we learn with the times, right? I mean, nothing is perfect in the world. So we'll always get some imperfections. We have to ride over that. We have to correct it with time. And I think with the team's management bandwidth now, particularly with Jim joining, who is a hardcore cable guy and who is going to drive this, having run these businesses, been in that company for the last 20 years, I think it makes it much easier for us to drive this business uh, better than what we probably have done in the past. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I'll come back for Thank me. you. This is helpful. Thank you. <clears throat> Next question is from the line of Deepak Lalwani from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question was on the acquisition and CAPEX. Uh, so how are we going to fund these two uh, uh, projects and uh, how, how much debt are we going to take for this? Um, generally, I think we typically do a something like a 50-50 deepak on, on such matters. I think the acquisition is about 40, 45 million, uh, considering right. another maybe 5 million as an additional you know, working capital or whatever. 
I think we'll go to, go that also at a 50-50 way. We are already we have in principle uh, sanction in place from one of our bankers for that transaction. In terms of this uh, capex, again it would be probably 50-50. Uh, I think uh, again that 125 crores, please understand, will be spread over almost two years. I think by the time the building can all come up. So it is not that it's going to happen over the next six months. So we just given a more a directional capex than an actual uh, one year capex or whatever it is. So again, that would be funded maybe 50, 60 crores of debt we might take. And we have got enough cash in the balance sheet as you know. Right. So about it. Does that answer your question, Deepak? <laughs> Thank you. Next question is a follow-up from the line of Sriman Dodoria, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thanks again. Uh, just one uh, bookkeeping question. Uh, the other income uh, portion uh, in this quarter was higher 15 crores. So was there any uh, one-off uh, in this quarter? Other income, mega part. Can you answer this? Basically, the forex fluctuation uh, credits. Uh, okay. could, you, could you please quantify, sir, how much was that? So other income, whatever shown there is uh, uh, one is uh, like uh, forex fluctuation and some other uh, income such as DEPB income and, and which is operational nature, those things are included in that. I can give you the breakup later also. Sure, sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Abhishek Jain from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, how much capex plan for uh, FY22 and FY23, uh, including acquisition of LDC business, and uh, how much gross block addition uh, can happen uh, in these two years after the acquisition uh, after the acquisition of LDC business? In terms of gross block, exact number, I think you can come offline and maybe get some data from Medapa. But in terms of the capex, as I said. Our 125 million uh, capex domestically is over probably the next 18 months or so, and of course the LDC acquisition at 42 million is the uh, is the thing. There are the two capexes that we are seeing. As you know, we have got nearly 300 uh, odd crores in our balance sheet, and as I just explained, I think we typically do a one is to one kind of a split of uh, our uh, requirements between our own funds and the borrowed funds. So. Maybe it will increase our debt. Uh, let's say if you look at um, 20, 20, not 2022, 2023, our debt probably may increase by about, I don't know, 75, 80 crores or so over the next two years. We'll you also be repaying capex? the existing one, yeah. So you are talking about capex of $125 million and $42 million? 125 crores. Okay. And uh, 42 million. 42 million is uh, is for the LDC acquisition. Yes, that is in dollars. Sorry. Do okay. And uh, sir, uh, uh, next question is the Phoenix uh, Lab margin now uh, that is hovering between nine to ten percent. So uh, and that is because of the increase in the RF cost. So uh, what sort of the plan do you have to uh, take it in a mid team digit? Uh, are you able to pass on the commodity cost in the near term? Mohan, will you answer this question? Sure. Uh, like what I said, in the aftermarket, we are the uh, aftermarket leaders here in India. Therefore, we took that uh, position that we will make the first move. And there was uh, some amount of resistance from the marketplace, but we insisted that you know the commodity prices have gone up and therefore we will have to increase. The, after a few months later, all the other players also increased their prices. Therefore, the price parity between the competitors kind of came into the balance levels that we had earlier. So from that perspective, at the market we have done. Now the issue here is what we can do in the other label market. That means where we label it in other brands and give it to them and also with the OEMs and their tier ones, that is the beam, beam manufacturers. So right now we are engaging the OEMs, we are discussing with them, 
and with one OLM we have already got a price increase also. Therefore, this is a process, but please understand that this market is not used to getting, uh, giving price increases, particularly in this commodity. Therefore, uh, you know, for the first time we are going in front of them and talking to them, showing the numbers, telling that gases price has gone up, glass price has gone up, molly price has gone up, tungsten has gone up. Therefore, they are not used to it, therefore it will take time, but definitely we will prevail on that. Okay, sir. Thank you. That's all for my side. I think it is uh, 11.55. We will take maybe a couple of more questions there. We have got another hard to stop at 12. So. Definitely, sir. So we'll take our last two questions then, sir. Is that okay? Yes, sure. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Nikhil Kale from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Congrats on a good set of numbers. So just taking one of the earlier questions on the margin front. Uh, so if I look at the last four five quarters on a console basis, we've been consistently hitting 16% margins and in fact even higher in a couple of quarters. Now I understand that you mentioned that there have been some pricing, uh, pricing uh, increases pertaining to previous quarters. But I mean, even on the cost side, there have been certain, uh, I mean, the input pressures uh, have been there in say Phoenix, which have not been passed on. Trade costs have gone up. So despite all these headwinds, we have been doing extremely well on the margin front. So I think in the past we've been guiding for a, a margin range between 14 to 16 percent. That has been uh, our target range. Uh, do you feel that uh, now maybe structurally the margins have gone up and going forward with the situation turning favorable uh, in terms of normalization of raw, price, raw material prices, uh, improvement in volumes, uh, margins can actually further inch up and the range can maybe shift to 16 to 18 percent. That kind of a level. I think we are all optimistic, Nikhil, but uh, it doesn't happen in business. I think the moment a customer sees some prices have come down, they come running to us also. So it's a, it's a two-way street. So all I would like to say is that, you know, Suprajit has been uh, a, a very steady in, a, in their guidance, and uh, we always said 14 to 16 is a doable, and it is a very good margin for auto component businesses. And I think we'll continue to stick to it. I think the challenges are still not over. In fact, we just had a board meeting yesterday, and some of our... CXOs are offer, you know, making presentations on the depth of price increases sought by some of the suppliers, particularly steel, plastics, and as Mohan said, some of the PLD related prices. You know, they are not small. They are not two, three, four percent. The customer will at this will give you two percent, three percent, four percent custom price increase. For example, you know, Krypton grass, grass has gone up by 10x. Container costs have gone up by 5x. Where do you pass it on? I mean, there may be some tempering of these prices. I just heard that uh, container costs are sort of topped up. Great, great news. But then customer has not given it to us. So if it comes down, there may be some saving. But if it comes down a little more, they will come for a price reduction. So I think the 14 to 16 is a very good margin to aim at uh, on a consolidated basis. That too, you know very well in some of the businesses are not delivering that. It is being sustained by some other businesses. So... On a complete basket, I think we continue to, you know, give that kind of a guidance. Okay, got it. Uh, and then, uh, on the LDC front, uh, just had a, uh, one question. Uh, are there any pension liabilities, given that we uh, we have employees based out of... No, the, we don't have any pension liabilities from uh, the incoming employees, no. Okay, great. And just one last housekeeping question. Uh, so, uh, uh, for the year, what is the kind of keeping that we were looking at? Uh, we have done, I think, 20, 22 or uh, crore for the first half. So, what would be the capex for the full year? Again. Repeat the question. What would be the capex for the full year? If I tell you. For the current year, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, what has happened is that we have reviewed the whole thing and, you know, there has been a lot of internal discussion on uh, the capex. So, what we are doing is that not... Of course, end of the year, we'll be able to tell you what is the CAPEX we used this year. But we are completely reviewed for the next 18 months our requirement of CAPEX. And that is at 125 crores. But would that be more back-ended? So more of it will be flowing? No, no, in no. no it, will not, it, it will be sort of continuing because we are just starting the one major plant in Bangalore. It just started. We had the groundbreaking only recently. So it, it will be sort of spread over the next 18 months. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we will take our last question, which is from the line of Pratik Kothari from Unique PMS. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity again. So just uh, one question from my side in terms of uh, the opportunities that we are seeing on the inorganic side in terms of factorization. So uh, given this LDC, uh, I mean, are we done for in the meanwhile or do we have much more opportunities out there? Are we done for the meanwhile? Certainly, yes. But are we done for the rest of the our business careers? No, I don't think so. Yes, at the moment, I think we have enough work to do and we will be focused on this. Uh, but, uh, you know, as you know, historically, Suprajit has always been both organic growth driven as well as uh, acquisitive uh, growth. So that gene is very much in Suprajit, so it will continue. But at the moment, I think this is a very important, uh, as I said, Again, I want to report, uh, re repeat, I think in five years down the line, if there are some investors who are there today are still with us today, they will know what, how transformational this could be. So we will be completely focused on this at this moment. Fair enough. Thank you and all the best. Sir. Thank you. And I would like to thank you all for the, uh, for the continued interest in Suprajit. I hope uh, we have answered your questions reasonably well. If there's anything more that you need to know, you can always connect with Medapa to get some more data or information. And at the same time, I'd also like to thank Vijay Sarathi and his team at Andharati uh, for organizing these conference calls for us every quarter. And thank you very much, Zaid, for uh, the for perfect moderation of this session. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you very much, Mr. Rai. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Andharati Shares and Securities, that concludes today's conference call. Thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.